Hi, it's me again, the Pilgrim Storyteller. And today I'm going to tell you a story that I wrote myself about a visitor to a very special place that the children near me would all know called Foxwood. It's on the outskirts of a little town that I live in called Millen in Cumbria. And every year we get visitors from all over the world, not just human visitors, we get bird visitors too. And this story is about a very special visitor. In fact, it's a robin. You see, we see robins every winter and we look at them and we think they all live here all year round, but a lot of them don't. A lot of them come here from colder countries where they can't stand the cold in the winter. And that's what this story is about. It's about a visitor to Foxwood and how he was treated. The little robin had had a long, long journey. He'd flown down from Sweden, which is lots and lots of miles away. He arrived at Foxwood. Friends had told him it was a good place to go for the winter, not quite as cold as the icy north. Uh, he arrived cold and tired and had a look round. It was October time and, and there were so many trees. This was wonderful. Where would he spend the winter? He had a look round and he saw a big old oak tree. Huge trunk. Branches that went out and out. And he looked really strong. That would be a good place to spend the winter. So he asked Mr Oak if he could spend the winter in his branches. Hmm. You? Spend winter with me? Whew. You don't look like the robins that live round here. You're different. Hmm. Couldn't possibly have you living me over the winter. Okay. Wasn't quite the welcome he was expecting, but all right. He couldn't help looking different than other people, other robins even. So he went to the beech tree. Now the beech tree had beautiful dark purple leaves and looked wonderful. And his branches spread out even further than the oak trees. This would be a place to stay. Please. Mr. Beach, can I stay in you for the winter? Me? Oh, no, 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 you can't stay with me. You speak funny. You don't sound like the people from round here. So I couldn't possibly let you stay with me. Oh. Okay. So he hopped around a little bit further and he found a willow tree. And her branches came up through the air and down like a waterfall to the water below. And they hung in the little stream that ran through the forest. And he said, please, Mrs Willow, can I stay in your branches over the winter? <sighs> if only... I'm so sorry. I have so many troubles of my own. I couldn't possibly take you on as well. Oh dear. Poor Robin was starting to feel a little bit put out and very not welcome when he heard a little voice in the background saying, You can stay with me. I don't mind. And as he looked round, he saw the holly bush. Not the most inviting of visitors. Um, you know, not the best place to stay, maybe. He'll have to utch his way through the prickles. But, but he didn't have much choice. And so he managed to squirm his way between the prickly leaves of the holly and he got deep inside the bush and there he stayed. And the rains came. And November brought the wind. And one morning he walked out from his home 
And he saw the great mighty oak tree with not a leaf left. The beech tree too was quite naked. And the willow had branches broken off and dropped in the stream. But the holly, the holly's spiky leaves were very shiny and hard and that meant the rain just ran off the top of them. And the holly had berries that meant he had something to eat all the way through the winter. In fact, the holly turned out to be the best place to be. And he saw out the winter there and as spring came and the grass started to grow again and the ferns turned the place green and then eventually the blue arrived from the bluebells. He knew it was time to go home to Sweden. And off he went, but not before saying a really big thank you to the holly tree and thanking him for making the visitor welcome. He did speak differently than others. He did look slightly different than the other birds around. But he'd been welcomed with open arms. And after all, isn't that what we should all do?